I have a proposal. I want to say what's up to everybody. I'll wait for you guys to start chiming in. Uh, I have an idea. I'm pissed off. I'm hurt. I'm angry. But I do want to address something. And I have a proposal. How you doing, Diane Rosier? Priscilla Wiley, how are you? Brother Ash Stevens. Ash, please don't go nowhere, brother. Stick around for me if you will, please. I appreciate it. Um, I need you, I need you on this, brother Ash. So please don't go anywhere, brother. Stick around. I, of course, we all know about the issue, you know, the incident that just happened in Atlanta. Uh, another white cop shoots a black man. And from what I understand, he gets shot in the back. Uh, the man wrestled with the cops, pulled out his taser. Uh, according to Atlanta law, according to what I, I heard an attorney said, uh, tasers are not classified as deadly weapons in Atlanta. From what I understand, the cops shoot this man in the back. He wrestled with the cop, he pulled the guy's taser, he might have pointed it at him, even if he did. You know, let's just go with the fact that he pulled, let's go with he pulled and he pointed the taser at the cop, okay? But he ran. He ran. He fought with the cops, beat the cop's ass, but he ran. He pointed the taser, took the taser out, and he ran. They can't say we don't know what the object was. Can't say he don't know what the object was because the taser in the video clearly the taser was yellow. Okay, and I'm gonna get I'm gonna get to my proposition in just a second. I just wanna I just wanna release release some fuel right now. The taser is yellow. It was a yellow colored taser. I've seen it before, and I clearly saw the taser in the video. So if they knew that this guy pointed a taser, why did they kill this man? Okay, let's go with that. The taser was yellow, and somebody tried to tell me, justifying that the cops didn't know what was pointed at him. Obviously, the cops knew what was pointed at them because he took the object off the fucking cop. He took the object off the cop, and the cop clearly knows it was a taser. The cop can clearly see that it was yellow. Cops do not carry yellow guns. I'm going to get to my proposal. I want you guys to hold tight. Just hang tight. Brother Ash, please don't leave, man. Brother Anthony Wells, please don't leave. Ladies, if you come and go, that's fine. I need my brothers to stand tight for me. Because I need you. I need you guys to stand tight, fellas. People might say, why was he wrestling? Why was he wrestling with the cops? That may escalate things. Let me explain something to you fuckheads. And I'm not calling anybody in particular a fuckhead. I'm not doing that. Don't misunderstand. Don't get what I'm saying misconstrued. But I'm, let me just say this. This shit's been going on far too long. Far too long. It's getting to a point where a cop wants to manhandle us. It's going to get to a point where we're going to start knocking them the fuck out. I'm, I'm, I'm serious, man. I'm serious. It's going to get to a point and say, look, man, if you shoot me, you just shoot me. I'm knocking you to... Here's, here's why it's getting pissed. This is why it's pissing us off as black men. If you're not a black man, if you want to try to chastise what I'm trying to explain and what I'm saying, if you try to chastise, you're not a black man, you're not going to understand it. And if you try to chastise it, kiss my ass. Let me share something with you. As a black man, myself, at 16 years old, I was manhandled. I was manhandled by cops who arrested me for a stolen car that I was not in. Manhandled me. My mother stood outside crying, please don't hurt my son, please don't hurt my son. Took me down to the jail only to let me go free later, knowing that I was innocent. Okay? This was in, I was 16 years old, living up in a place called Oak Park up in D.C. Let me share this with you. We are tired 
of getting manhandled. And, and let me tell you what really, really pisses us off about us being manhandled. And let me let me be honest with you guys. This is not racist. This is just bone out fact. Fact. Let me say this to you folks. Whether you're black listening to me or white listening to me. Let me just say this right here. This is evident. This is 100% fact. We're pissed off mostly with this manhandling of us for two reasons. One, we're tired of it. And two, here's what we know. And here's what you white cops know as well. This is what you all know. On average, on average, not 100% of the time, but on average, man to man, a black man will beat all the living shit out of you. That's a fact. We dominate in every sport there is. If more black folks was playing hockey, the revenue for hockey will hike up. Because we will dominate that too. We dominate in every damn sport. We have our DNA, our coordination can't be fucked with. You don't, you can't outdance us. You can't out athletics. You can't outdo us in athletes and athletics. So what do you do? You just use your head and say, we can get them to make us all this money because people want to come to see how high they can jump, how fast they can run. Yes. Every now and then, you may have a, 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 a real good white running back. You may have a John Riggins from here and there. Every now and then, you might have a Klitschko or, 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 or Tyson Fury from time to time. But average, we dominate the fucking sports, any sport. Teach us how to play hockey. We'll make billions and billions of dollars in hockey for you, for you owners as well. That's a fact. Fact, if you take the average warrior, the average warrior in England, the knights, and you take them and put them in a ring and fight a Zulu warrior, I'm going to tell you right now, on average, that Zulu warrior would kick his ass. This is our DNA. We are built for this. We are structured. Our DNA, God made, this, this, made us this way for a reason. Because we're warriors. And let me share something else with you. That is the main reason why we are so sick and tired of you white cops manhandling us. Because we know on average, hand to hand, we will kick your ass. On average. You know it. Your white women know it. And we know it. And our black women know it. <clears throat> we need to just stop business as usual as black people. Our professional basketball player. Here's my proposal, folks. You're right, Chris Christo. Here's, here's, with that being said, I just let that out for a second. And that's not race. That's not racial. That's not racism. But I just said, I just stated a pure fact. A pure fact. And if you don't believe with us, if you're mad at what I said for telling the fact, I tell you what. Take five white guys and five black guys and put them all in a dunk contest and see who, see who dominates it. You already know who that is. That's just, that's just our DNA, folks. We are mendingos. We are built for this. We're built tough. You, 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 you put your army medical labs around African countries and you insert AIDS and Obo Ebola in our, in our countries, in our regions, and guess what? We are still here. You come up with AIDS and, and HIV, you come up with coronavirus, you come up with bird flu, and guess what? We are still here. We are still, we're not going anywhere. Get that through your thick ass head. We are not going anywhere. As a matter of fact, if you study the census, the Census Bureau did a study stating that by 2045, 
Half of the Caucasian, Caucasian race will be out, will be wiped out. There are more Caucasians dying than there are being born. That's a fact. That's coming from the Census Bureau. They're trying to clone now. They're trying to create test tube babies now. Why? Because they're trying to make themselves not to be extinct or endangered. That's a fact. That's not racism. I love everybody, but let's bring the truth out, folks. Let's bring the truth out. That all that's created with racism. Another thing created racism is, a, is, a, is your dick problem. Because you're not well endowed. We know that's a fact. We know that's a fact. You would kill a slave because your white wives was crazy over our dick. And right now, today, all oh, this, oh, I, this, I hear what, oh, yeah, I only date the black guys. No, 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 you don't love us. You love the dick. Come on, folks, let's just keep this 100. Let's just keep this fucking 100, man. Racism. If you tell me you only deal with black men, that's racism. Why do you only deal with black men? What's the stereotype about black men that you only deal with black men? That is racism. Period. You guys, as a motivational speaker, you guys told me you want me to stop, you want me to come out and keep it 100? Damn it, I'm coming out and I'm keeping it 100. Period. Let's call it what it is. If you want to get rid of the problem, you have to address the problem. Don't address the symptoms, address the problem. And I'm going to tell you guys something. Let me go into my proposal. And if anything else comes to my mind that I want to share, I'm going to share it as well. I'm going to continue to share that. But let me come to my proposal right now. Here is my proposal. You pro athletes. You pro athletes, NBA players, NFL players, black boxers, black pro athletes. Matter of fact, black uh, uh, entertainers, black celebrities, movie makers, rap art, hip hop artists, singers, actors and actresses. All of us, all of you. This is my proposal. All of you, shut the fuck down right now. Shut down right now. You're going to hurt the oppressor. We're going to hurt these government. We're going to hurt these white owners. We're going to hurt them in their pockets. We're going to demand that they acknowledge us as importance in this country. If <clears throat> For the NBA players, black NFL players, black NBA players, black everybody who are making millions and millions of dollars for white owners, I highly propose to you to stop, do not play, or do not shoot a single hoop for the NBA this year. NFL, <clears throat> do not catch another football. Black boxers, do not throw another punch for any of these motherfuckers. Any of them. If you really want to resolve the problem, we need to hit them in their damn pockets. Hit them in their pockets. Black People makes up 1.3 trillion dollar in consumer debt. That is 20. That was 20, 2018, 2019. I don't know. I haven't done that research yet, but I'm pretty sure. And we're already half a year this year. I'm sure that's is we over 1.3 trillion by now. Consumer debt. Stop making giving these people opportunities to make millions and millions of dollars on us, and we make minimum money. NFL, all prof professional players, professional athletes, do not participate in any sport. NFL is getting ready to come up. Black athletes don't even report to training camp until some sort of reform is taking place in Congress. Until we walk into Congress and say, these are our demands, or we would not play a freaking football game again. Matter of fact, we can come up with our own Negro football league, just like there was a Negro baseball league. You see, there was a Black Wall Street, but you know what? They bombed Black Wall Street. We got an opportunity. We can create another Black Wall Street right now. 
We can create an, a, an African American, a black football league, a black basketball league. We can create this. Th folks, we have to learn how to stop being dependent of people who don't like us. Tired of that. And we're ready to go back and play sports like back to normal because we think COVID-19 is over and all this and they open up shit. Listen, we have the opportunity to shut down and create a bigger recession than what COVID-19 just created. Every pro athlete should not participate in any sport until some reform takes place in Congress. I ain't talking about defunding cops. That, don't mean, that ain't doing shit for me. We need to hit NFL owners in their pockets. And you know what's included in all of this? The Washington Redskins need to change their damn name. It's a racist name. There are Indian groups who are against it, who feels offended by it. And then there are some Indian groups who don't feel offended by it. But if you have anybody who don't feel good about something, a group of individuals, you need to change the goddamn name. Change the name. That's another thing. Thank you, my brother Lee. Man, I want y'all to say hello to my big brother, Lee Wade. My oldest brother, man. Blood brother, too. That's my blood. That ain't just ain't saying brother like, hey, what's up, bro? That's my real brother. I want y'all to say hello to him. Give him some love. He's a correction officer down in North Carolina. His life is on the line. He don't mistreat people because he has a badge and a stick. He doesn't, this man, my brother is all about character and integrity. My father and my mother bragged heavily about him when I was a kid. I always wanted to immolize him when I was a kid. I wanted to join the Marines like he did when I was a kid. He, I don't know if he even know that, but I'm saying it right now. My, my, my love him. To, 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 to the world, to the moon and back. That's my big brother, man. I would, any, anything I could do for that man. To my brother. He's in law enforcement. He ain't mistreating nobody. He carrying himself as a gentleman. As, with dignity and, and with honor. Every athlete, celebrity, don't participate in jack shit until we go to Congress and some reform has been passed and is taking place. We, that's the problem. We had so many people who have been killed by police in the past. So many people been killed by police in the past and we continue to business as, as usual. Kneeling, evidently kneeling didn't, didn't do the job. Because what did they do? They took our kneeling and they changed, and they changed the narrative. They created the narrative out of what they, behind what they do. Folks, it's time for us to control the narrative. It's time for us to make a stance. It's time for us to tell them exactly how they're going to start operating. And let me tell you something right now. All you Uncle Tom, all you, we, don't, we ain't looking for no punks. We looking for soldiers. We ain't looking for clowns, goddammit. We looking for soldiers. <laughs> Period. We're tired of this, man. And I don't care nothing about statistics. I don't care how many white folks has been killed or more than black folks. I don't care about that. Because if white folk, that many white folks have been killed, why aren't y'all asses out there marching about it? If y'all asses out there marching about it, they will be more careful about how they're treating citizens, period, on the street. Just because y'all not marching about it don't mean we're not supposed to. We are marching about it. We're going to make something happen of this. Stop carrying on business as usual. Stop walking in and highly want to support these people when they don't even like you. They don't like you. They like your money. Jerry Jones of the world. Dan Snyder of the world. NFL and, 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 and NBA owners. Hit these people in their pockets. I don't care who they vote for. I don't care who they endorse in politics. But one thing for sure is that we do not need to throw another ball, shoot another ball, or smack another ball out of the ballpark until some reform takes place. We need to hold other organizations accountable. Kick Al Sharpton to the side. 
We tired of, we tired of, just like my brother said, we tired of people just making speeches. It's time to take action. It's time to do something. Period. It's time to do something. It's time to make a stance. Marching is, 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 is out, marching is outdated, for real. <clears throat> and then you have companies, organizations like Antifa, who are paid for by the likes of George Soros. Black Lives Matter, pay, paid for by Joe Soros. And that's a fact. 2016, he put $45 million in Black Lives Matter. You see? We got, we got those same kind of people trying to endorse and put money into what we're doing, what we need. We don't need their money. We have enough to do what we need to do. You see, this is what I keep, keep trying to educate people. Stop looking for the oppressor to liberate us in our movement with their money. You're still a slave. You're still a slave. If Black Lives Matter said, we want to take your $45 million and open up some black colleges. We want to give some black scholarships. I bet you George Soros would take his money back. He don't give a shit about your education. He has an agenda. He puts his money behind your Black Lives Matter so that you can serve out his agenda. When are y'all going to wake the fuck up? Understand this, folks. I tell you guys this every day. I get, and here's the problem. The biggest challenge is that my own damn people is trying to shoot me down. What the fuck you shooting me down for? I'm helping your damn ass. I'm trying to wake you, I'm trying to wake you the fuck up. Some people you got to like open their goddamn on eyes so they can fucking see. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. This is my proposal. I, I'm going to repeat this again. My proposal to black America. My proposal to black America. Especially all of our professional black athletes. Celebrities. Do not participate in anything that you do. You have enough money. You don't have to play football this year. You don't have to play basketball this year. Or baseball this year. Box this year. You don't have to participate in any of that. You got the money to do this. I'm asking all of you, professional athletes, and I'm asking all of you right here watching and listening to me right now, send this information. If you got access to any of these black athletes, send this information to them. Send this video to them, please. I'm not trying to get views. I'm not trying to be a, a celebrity. I like to keep my group of, of audience. I'm not trying to be known all over the world for what I'm sharing with you right now. I'm not looking for that. I'm not looking for fame. I'm looking for reform. I'm looking for a change in this country. We have to live here just like everybody else. Just like everybody else. We need to send this information, send this video to people challenging them. And say, if you continue, if you're going to go out here and play football without any reform being done, if you're going to go out and play basketball, then you are the problem. You're not part of the problem. You are the problem. Because they know that as long as they got you by the strings and can take you into their locker room to change up the guard and play, play ball, then guess what, folks? <clears throat> the issues that we have in this country is not going to change. And the reason why it's not going to change, because we're not changing their bottom line. We're not changing their bottom line. That's why they want to change the narrative of the flag because you take a kneel. It's not about the flag. But they change that narrative because they want to control the narrative. If they can control the narrative, they can control their bottom line. It's time for us to control the narrative now. It's time for us to change the narrative now. That's point blank, period. It's time for us to change the narrative. Then ch So change the damn narrative. We need the Congress. We need Congress to wake the hell up and see that we're not playing with them no more. I mean, we just lost George Floyd. Then we just lose another guy due to a police shooting because he kicked his ass. We're tired of being manhandled. We're tired of this. I get pulled over. I'm down here in Florida. I get pulled over all the time. And I don't even get tickets. They pull me over because they see me in a Mercedes convertible. They pull me over. Trying to find reasons why they pulled me over. Tell them all I had, I got motivational speaker on my tag plate. They try to say, oh, uh, 
you're not supposed to have this on your tag plate. I said, okay, sir. No problem. I understand. Do I take the plate off? No. Did they give me a warning for it? No. One person pulled me over and said, I, I didn't stop at a stop sign. I said, where's the stop sign? I don't see a stop sign, man. And she said, oh, that there's a, a crosswalk. I said, there's a cross, crosswalk there either. Then she, got a, then she go, look over there to where I was and go, oh, well, you know, you got this plate cover, this plate frame that you're not supposed to have. I'm like, really? Do you? I said, you pulled me over because you saw me coming towards you, right? You was already pulling out your spot to get behind me to pull me over. But you didn't see the back of my car until you got behind me to put your lights on. So you telling me you pulled me over because of my tag plate? What did you really pull me over for? So she let me go. I get pulled, folks, I get pulled over all the time. And don't get tickets. But I act nice. I cooperate. I cooperate. All the time I get pulled over. I could easily be one of the statistics who gets killed by one of these damn racist ass cops down here. But I participate. But you know, you, you want to shut them down? You shut them down by not asking for their captain. You don't ask for the captain. You don't ask for the lieutenant or the sergeant because they're going to cover for them. Cops don't tell on cops. I hope you guys know this by now. You do this. You do this by contacting internal affairs. Internal affairs, police, the police. They don't want to deal with internal affairs. Internal affairs going to come down on them hard. It's their job to police the police. That's who you contact. So when you get pulled over, you have to make sure that you are in compliance with them. Make sure you're in compliance. Be nice. Smile. How was your day today? Smile. Don't trigger the ego. Smile. And it's get your ass to where you got to go to safe. Get home safe. Get to work safe. Wherever it is you're going, get there safe. And once you get there safe... <clears throat> You contact, and if you, you can't get their badge, you can get their squad car number. Their police car has a squad car number. Look up the squad car number before, as you're pulling off. And as you pull off, you contact the internal affairs, and you let the internal affairs know what happened. The internal affairs is on your side, ladies and gentlemen. Internal affairs, let me say that again. Internal affairs is on your side. They're going to look deep into the matter. This is exactly what they're going to do. They're going to look deep into the matter for you. They're going to investigate for you as soon as these cops, as soon as the captains, and soon as, see, I'm going to tell you something. The captains are not going to hear you much because they're going to protect their officer. But when the captain gets contacted by the internal affairs, they're shaking in their boots. Now they're going to go to that officer that harassed you and say, look, dude, don't be out here fucking up. They're not going to press. They're not going to approach them because you said something. They're going to approach them because internal affairs are involved. You guys got to understand the difference. Don't worry about contacting the captain. Don't worry about contacting the lieutenant or the or the, or the sergeant because they're going to cover for the cop that harassed you. Internal affairs is who you need to call. And when they get, it's just like a job. If your employer, if you're going through office bullying on your job, if they're office bullying you, if you and you know that they're office bullying you, you know that they are picking on you, they're trying to find ways to get rid of you. If you are experiencing this on your job, <coughs> same situation. Who police the employers? EEOC. Or you can go to the Office of Human Rights. They don't want to deal with either one of them. They don't want to deal with EEOC. You, they don't want to deal with the Department of Justice. That's where you report. That's where you get. You don't have to get an attorney. You just go to EEOC. They will look into the problem for you. And guess what? There are also retaliation laws. Those that company that your employer cannot retaliate toward to you. This is stuff you gotta understand, folks. You gotta read. You gotta study. The same thing about you see employers out here telling you you gotta wear a mask on your on, on, at the job. I'm not, if you want to wear a mask, cool. Me, I'm not wearing it. But if you want to wear a mask, 
Wear a mask. You guys already know how I feel about that. That's another thing. If you are wearing a mask on your job and it's not comfortable for you, guess what? You are not <clears throat> in, in a mandate of wearing a mask. Did you know that your job asking you, telling you to wear a mask, did you know that that actually violate HIPAA laws? Did you guys not study HIPAA? Read up on it. If Even if a cop asks you about wearing a mask, you can tell that cop, due to my conditions, I'm not wearing a mask. And they're not even supposed to ask you what those conditions are. That's, it, that's violation of HIPAA. The same thing is, is if you're traveling on an airplane. You see everybody they're telling people you got to wear a mask. I'm not wearing a mask. I have conditions that the where I cannot be wearing a mask. That's all you need to tell them. They can't tell you what those conditions actually what those conditions are. That violates HIPAA. You get on an airplane without a mask. Period. You got to understand what your rights are, folks. Understand what your rights are. Understand what there there are some hidden laws out there that does protect you. Like contacting internal affairs when you have these cops that are harassing you. You have these cops that are not treating you fairly. You contact internal affairs. Understand what your rights are. You don't need to know. You don't need to let the cop know that you know your rights. That's egotistical and it's going to raise their ego and they're going to hurt you. They're going to find ways to hurt you because they know that you're smart. You don't need to let them know how smart you are. They'll know how smart you are when you call internal affairs on their ass. So again, I, I don't want to get off track with what I'm saying. So my proposal, my proposal, pro athletes, <clears throat> celebrities, movies, stars, singers, Beyonce, Jay-Z, all you guys, do not participate in anything that you do in your careers until some reform takes place before Congress. If you, if you really want to make change, we need to make change by hitting these white people in their pockets. And I'm just not saying this to, to, to be racist towards white people. I'm, I, I'm, not, I'm not fighting white people. I'm fighting white supremacy. There's a complete difference. Not white people, white supremacy. We need to hit them in their pockets, folks. <clears throat> NFL player, if you hurting the NFL, I'm going to tell you something. The NFL brings a whole lot of revenue every year. A whole lot of revenue every year. If all of our pro athletes say, me not coming back until y'all get Colin Kaepernick a job. One, the Washington Redskins changed their racist name. Two, and we need some reform for blacks around this entire country. We need some reform, not just police reform. We need <clears throat> racism to be demolished in this country. And if it's anybody who want to be racist, who don't like it, get the fuck off the planet. Because you telling black folks to go back to Africa, let me tell you something, white people. You're not a native anywhere on the damn planet. Heels and caves of Europe, where you, documents say that you're from, you're not even a native there. If you want to really, really get technical, if you really want to get down to science, we can go there. But the fact of the matter is, if you have to go back to where you come from, your ass wouldn't know where you need to go. So don't come here and say, well, black folks need to go back to Africa. Why don't you go back to where you come from? As a matter of fact, let the Native Americans determine who stays and who goes because they were here first. This is their native land. Let's be real. So I'm saying something here, folks. We need to let these people know that we mean business. And if you want to go, if any of you go back to play football, if any of you go back to play NBA basketball, then you're the problem. You're the problem. You need to make a stance, pro athletes, pro, pro, pro singers, rappers. You need to make a stance and say, we're not performing for any of you. We're not putting any more money in your pocket until some reform takes place before Congress. That's the bottom line. I hope this makes sense. I'm sorry that you, I'm, I'm a little upset right now, but I'm tired of our black men. I'm tired of them keep harassing us. I'm tired of us. I'm tired of them keep pulling us over. It's like we, George Floyd just made a big dent in this country. And these folks, these white supremacists still don't get it. And they're still trying to change the narrative. And we have people try to justify this recent incident, why this man was shot. Yeah, he might have escalated a problem because we're tired. We're tired, man. We're tired of being mistreated in this country. We're tired of being manhandled in this country. And we're tired of <clears throat> being in a position where they want us to escalate so that they can shoot and kill us. We're tired, man. 
If you're not a black man going through this, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I don't care if you're married to a black man. You do not know what the fuck you're talking about. You can be best friends with a black man, but you still have white privilege. And I don't think any of you would turn down white privilege because you like black people. Point blank. And I got a lot of white people on my friends list. And I'm speaking the truth here. I'm speaking the damn truth here. And I don't know what any white man who will want to train, train, trade places with any black man. None. So don't start talking about what black folks, you can't control the narrative no more. Fuck you. You are not controlling the narrative, narrative anymore. I'm sorry, this might not sound like me as a motivational speaker, but damn it, I'm mad. I'm upset right now and we need to do something and we need to do it now. Right now. You want to force vaccines on us? You want to put chips in us? Nano chips? You lying to us about coronavirus cases? Got people believing this shit? Got people wearing the carbon dioxide masks, cutting off their oxygen? Man, this is a fucking evil-ass country, man. Evil-ass country. It don't make no damn... Let me tell you, it really don't make no sense. It really don't make no sense how black folks is, 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 de is defending them. Be defending that bullshit. Telling me I'm wrong. Telling me I'm the conspiracy theory. No, motherfucker. Won't you pick up a book and read something? Won't you start doing your own diligence? Stop... Don't just look on one side of the shit. Don't just look on the shit that you believe in. That ain't studying. That ain't de doing your diligence. You, if you really want to study, I'm going to tell you something about studying and being successful in anything. It's about going against the grain. It's about doing shit that you don't be, feel comfortable doing. It's understanding the truth that challenges your belief. That's where success comes from. Don't just go out and just read the shit that you, that you know that you agree to. That's some bullshit. <clears throat> you got to go out here and study the shit that you don't want to know. That's how you become successful. That's how you become more wise. That's how you increase your knowledge. Challenging everybody. From pro athletes down to the poor and middle class. Stop. Hurt their pockets. Hurt their pockets. Pro athletes. Do not play a single NFL football down until some reform takes place. I'm just saying. I'm going to do the best I can to get this message out there to our professional athletes. The best I can to get this out to professional athletes. I'm not going to keep you guys. I hope what I'm saying to you makes sense. I need you guys to help me put this information out there. Put this video out there. Let's get this out there to these pro athletes. Tag them if, if you can. Steven Jackson even said it himself, uh, former ex-NBA <clears throat> ex player. He said, I love NBA, but this is not the time to be playing basketball. He's 100% right. Why? I hope he's not the only one who thinks that. And we need the guys who are actually NBA players today to think that same thing. LeBron James. I'm telling you something. If LeBron James says he's not playing, guess what happens? Just about all the other black athletes are not playing. If LeBron James, and I'm not putting this, <clears throat> I'm not trying to put this on the weight on shoulders of LeBron. I'm just saying, if LeBron James say he's not going to play a single game until some reform takes place, I get, I, I can tell you right now, a lot of black athletes are not going to play. Period. And I'm a Redskins fan. They need to change the damn name. And if I was a black athlete on the Redskins, I would not play until some reform takes place until, and until Dan Snyder changed the name. And I'm going to tell you one thing right now. <clears throat> not even white folks would go and look, look at a, a professional, a professional uh, sport with no black players on it. I can tell you that right now. They would not, man, they'd be bored out their damn mind. I'm going to tell you that right now. We are the highlights, folks. We are the entertainment. We are the show. Of all sports. If you take us out of sports. They make no money. 
They make no money. We need to change. We need reform. We need to come together. Thank you guys for listening. Sorry I'm a little rough, but I'm a, I'm a roughneck first before I put on suit and tie, became a, a published author, motivational speaker. Before, before all of that, I was a roughneck. I came up rough out of Southwest, Southeast D.C. That's just who I am. I can go there when I have to. And this time, at this, this particular time, I had to go there. I love all of you. I don't care what your race is. I love you all. But I do not love white supremacy. I'm Jay Hunter Lee. I love you. And the world needs you. You guys take care.